still here. I'm still looking at you, which means that the destroyer has not killed you yet. Uh, can I take it further? Jesus said to the man, he said, when did he start doing this to this boy? And he said, from he was a child. Oh, I feel like shouting. From he was a child. What is he telling me then? He's telling me that the enemy has been trying to get him from he was little. And until the time he met Jesus, he still didn't get him yet. I wish somebody would understand this. I'm going to borrow one right now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, how long has the devil been after you? How long, how long, how long, how long? I promise you, since you were a child, but you still No sound at all. 
which means God is operating in your spirit that you're not cognitive of in your mind. So the prayer is to get it out of your spirit, get it in your mind, so it can change your life. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And so now, remember, Jesus is saying, I have the ability to cause or prevent change. The ancient Greek philosophers define power as actually being without power, since power is the ability to change. Heraclitus, he says it this way, he says it's being is in continual flux. And the reason I know you're living is because you keep telling me I'm always going through changes. Ah, this definition has survived mainstream and, and even the tributaries. And it is really approached by Paul Tillich, who we regard as the ontological thinker. Power as defined as power of being. If you're here, you got power. Give somebody a high five second time and say, neighbor, if you're here, you have power. Ah, I feel it here now. So the text underlines then the philosophical definitions of power. And what the text does is notice the stages and the narrative aspects. We've got a father, and all the father has is a vision. Because his actuality is one of a son that's always being pushed around by demonic powers. So the only thing that he's holding on to is expectation. He's holding on to hope. Can I talk about hope for a minute? You see, you cannot have faith if you don't have hope. Because faith is the hypostasis of things hoped for. It is the elecos of things not seen. The hypostasis is the substance of things that hoped for. Hope is the workhorse of faith. I mean, hope is the workhorse. I mean, it is the slave to faith. Because you can't stop me from hoping. It doesn't matter how bad. Okay, can I bring something? I can walk into a room and and I walk into a room and my relative is comatose. And I sit there in the room and the doctors come and the nurses come and they whisper and it looks bad. And but I sit there and I have expectation that this is not the end. And that as long as I hope. Now we'll discuss hope around the table one day because sometimes you can hope too long in something that is wrong. I wish I could talk to you. Uh, you you're hoping, that, yeah, you're hoping he'll change, honey. But ain't no change in the baby. Uh, you can hope all you want to. Ain't got no change. You're hoping she'll change, but she ain't gonna stop cooking now, honey. Cause ain't no cooking in her. It's all, you can hope all you want to. But you got to hope and put your hope in the right place. And when you hope in God, I heard him say, hope that make it not ashamed. If I walk in with the expectation that in spite of where I am, God is going to bring me out with a mighty hand. And I can sit there and wait on him because waiting on him guarantees it's coming to pass because he builds my character when I wait so that when he gives me the gift I have enough character to handle it. A whole lot of folks want gifts but they don't have the character to handle it. I feel you. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. The Father has a vision and what feeds the hope and expectation is what he heard about Jesus. I feel like preaching here. You see, the Lord controls our mind through faith in his word. He may not change the situation, but he can control your mind 
happened in the middle of the circumstance. It's about mind control. Whoever controls your mind has you. I wish I could preach. Whoever controls the way you think has you. God does not change situations as quickly as we want him to. Because here comes Hobomone to remain under. It's a character build. Uh, can I digress for a minute? Just for a minute. Uh, I'm almost to the end. Uh, to think of the three, three Hebrew boys, for instance. Uh, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah. Uh, you know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Think of these fellows. If you notice now, they were the power that they exhibited. The king, uh, you know, the, the armies were defeated. Nebuchadnezzar defeated the armies. Their armies were defeated. Uh, the king was humiliated simply because uh, Nebuchadnezzar decapitated both his sons and then he took the boys, he took uh, the king and he blinded him so the last thing he saw was his sons being decapitated. Oh God, that was downhill to me. The, the army is defeated, the king's sons decapitated, the king humiliated, his temple desecrated, then he took the three boys, changed their names from Jehovahistic, Elohistic names, and gave them pagan names, and then he castrated them. Can, can, can it get any worse? Can it get any worse? They stood and looked at the king and they said, Oh king, uh, uh, we are not careful to answer you concerning this matter. And certainly they were not careful. They were talking to a despotic monarch who was an egomaniacal, uh, yes, fool. And, and so we are not careful, but the God we serve uh, is able, yes, to deliver us out of the fiery furnace and he will to deliver us out of your hand, O okay. king. But when I look over my history and I see I'm coming from defeated armies, decapitated king sons, uh, uh, humiliated king, desecrated temple, oh my God, when I think that God stood right there and watched them castrate me, I need another clause. I can't stop with his able. I can't stop with his will. But I got another clause. But if not, because he's still God, he may or he may not, because he's still God. But if not, I'm still not going to bow. Oh, I feel like preaching in here. The reason is, if I die for what I believe in, I win. Uh, if he delivers me, I win. The only way I can lose is if I bow. And I'm not the bowing. But he stepped in the situation. And now he says, Oh God, I feel it here. You and I have been taught deliverance. But all it takes is one time power for deliverance. But what we need to learn is sustenance. And that is, I might not change your situation, but I'll give you power to handle it. son that's powerless. The son is powerless, but the son is standing on the power of his father's hope. His hope was not in himself. 
his hope was in God in relationship to his son. Yeah. Then we've got another power broker, and that's the devil in control. And whenever there's going to be a fight, you've got on lookers. You've got people sitting around, looking around, to see how it's going to come out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Paul didn't throw any stones, but he held a coat. You got a lot of folk holding the coat in the middle of your fight. They're praying for you. They're just holding the coat. Uh -huh. They're just watching you and how you come out of your fight. Uh, can I say it another way? A whole lot of folk will come to your funeral who would not come to your rescue. Which is inherent power. 
Run from Pasador. Everything possible is in Dunamis. And he says, I am the source. So don't come to me with anything because I'm not an anything kind of God. We might as well have some church. Give somebody a high five and say, not just anything, but all things. I feel like lifting him up. I feel like giving him the glory. I feel like giving him some praise because he's not just an anything God. He's an all things God. I want to talk to somebody in here. You just don't want to ask God. I'm talking to you single sisters. Don't ask God for any man. Oh Lord, just give me any man. The devil is a liar. What you want to ask him for is all man. I need an all man. I don't want just any woman. But oh Lord, give me all man. I feel like preaching. I feel like lifting him up. Give somebody a high five. So you don't need any. Oh, 
can't do anything. Have mercy. Compassion on us. But if thou canst believe, we can move from the anything that press to the all things part of God. You're stronger than you think. It's your strength and your power. That God has given you. Come on, Bishop. That sustains you to the place and the point of deliverance. He had to keep you.
give it all to. I want you to take one person by both hands. One person by both hands. And I'm going to show you just how strong you are.